My name is Cheryl Kivel, and my husband Gary died on July the 26th. Gary, when I met him, was a professional soloist. He had won all kinds of awards with the Kiwanis and was actually very well known in Chatham. He sang at a lot of weddings and a lot of funerals. And then when the kids started to come along, we traveled as a family for 14 years and did a lot of churches and schools and concerts and banquets. He was also a piano technician and he learned to be that from his grandfather. He apprenticed with him starting when he was 14, and he was very well known in Chatham for that as well. Gary had cheated death a few times because we had a bad car accident that they didn't think he would survive from, and it left him with a lot of disabilities. And then he had heart surgery, which left him further uh, in a situation where he needed medical attention. So the day that he fell here in the living room, it was a day that changed everything from where I could manage him at home to where he had to have help. And so when it was suggested that we go to hospice, Voyager came and picked him up. We, I followed in our car, and by the time I went in, they were getting Gary all settled in bed in this beautiful room. I had had a tour of the hospice when it opened, but never dreamt that one of my family would ever be there. So to go into this room with this wonderful bed and wonderful window and the nice TV and fireplace and a couch. The first time one of the nurses came in and Gary had said, honey, I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm looking around for the equipment that I needed. And she looked at me, she goes, no, 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 no. That's my job now. And I remember looking at my daughter who was with me and saying, oh, I can now be his wife. I can't even express how I felt, but I just kept saying I can now be a wife. And I realized after it was all over that being the caregiver had worn me out to the point where I literally slept for about a month. My daughter lives in Savannah, Georgia, and she flew in and arrived on the Sunday and stayed inside the hospice until Thursday. And just the fact that uh, she could go down to the little kitchen and have a bowl of soup and have a cup of coffee and sleep. They brought blankets, pillows, and one night they thought I maybe shouldn't go home, and so they had prepared a place upstairs for me to stay. And it was just catering to the family. By that point, Gary had got to the point where he wasn't too much aware of the caring that they were doing for him, but it didn't. the caring didn't stop. The caring became for us. There was another uh, amazing thing that happened on the day that Gary arrived. One of the nurses brought in a jar with a cocoon in it and had the grandkids were there and she says, you watch this and in 10 days it's going to turn brown and then it is going to emerge into a butterfly, but don't take the lid off for four or five hours. So the grandkids were intrigued with this and Gary had been watching. On the day that Gary passed away, the cocoon burst and the butterfly was in the bottom of the jar and at 20 after 7 that evening the whole family went outside into the courtyard took the lid off and the butterfly it looked like it flew around all of us and then went off into heaven and I went back into the room and kissed Gary on the forehead and said honey the butterfly has gone to heaven it's time for you to go too and within a half an hour he was gone one of my drawbacks from when I was being pushed to put him in a nursing home was the cost. And all of a sudden you have got this beautiful facility that you can take your loved one to that doesn't cost a cent. And in thanks for them doing that, when Gary passed away, we asked for donations to be sent to the hospice. And that did happen with a lot of our friends, which made me happy.